Today is Monday, and we're going to take notes starting with weather and climate. We will take notes today, tomorrow, and Wednesday. Thursday and Friday, you will work on your wind cars. Thursday and Friday, you will work on your wind cars. Monday, a week from today, we will race the wind cars. You will not be allowed to take your wind cars home to work on them. So if you're not done by Friday on it, I can't help it, okay? You didn't stay on task because your wind cars, last year the second graders had three days to do their wind cars and that was drawing it and putting them together. This year I'm giving y'all four. So you get one more extra day and they all got theirs done. So when you come in on Thursday, you need to stay on task and not be talking and all that and get your wind car ready to go. And then on Monday, we'll test them or we'll race them is what we do, we race them. Tuesday, we will review for the final. We will have a semester final. I will pull questions from all the tests that we've taken up to this point this semester, not for the whole year, just this semester. You will be allowed to use your notebooks and then I will also have questions on there about what we're taking notes over the next three days. So there'll be questions about the weather on there. There'll be questions about climate and the air masses and weather plants. Okay. Um, then we start testing on Wednesday. As far as I know, odd hours test on Wednesday. Even hours will test on Thursday. And then Friday, we go back to regular schedule. So you'll be in here your normal hour on Friday. Uh, and I'm not for sure yet what we're going to do that day because you'll turn your iPads in on Friday to your homeroom. Uh, another thing I need to address is class dues. If you not pay your class dues, you need to pay them. Apparently, there is a controversy over the amount of the amount the money is and what the money is used for. And I know I've already told y'all this once, but I'm going to tell you again. So you can let your parents know if they ask. The $50 a year is set by administration. And they started doing that about, my understanding, three or four years ago. Used to, the classes voted on how much they want their class dues to be each year. But the administration came in and said, every class will pay the same amount of class dues every year. So you'll pay $50 class dues every year, except for your senior year. You don't have to pay class dues on your senior year, okay? What the money goes for is when you're juniors, you have to put on the prom. Your class is responsible for putting on the prom. Uh, I'm, I will be the junior sponsor next year. It's going to take, from what I have found out from other people and crunch some numbers, we're going to need about $6,000 to put on a halfway decent prom. And that, that takes care of the location, the DJ, decorations, it, it's expensive guys. I mean, it's expensive. Okay. Um, and then it also takes care of your caps and gowns for your senior year. So you don't have to pay for your caps and gowns. We do not rent caps and gowns at Merritt school. You got them, but, um, your class dues goes towards that. All right. Is there any questions about class dues? If you don't pay them this year, they just carry over to next year. So this year you owe $50. If you don't pay them this year, then next year you're gonna owe 100. Okay, they don't go away just because you did not pay them. Yes. Everyone pays them. Yes. Everyone pays them. You only, I think you only have to pay 25 because you only been here one semester. Okay, but everyone pays them. But I'll double check on that because I think it's considered 25 a semester. You can make it in payments, you know, but y'all should have, if you're gonna, you know, but now we're down to the end of the year and you need to get them paid. So it's kind of hard to make loan payments when we only have two weeks left. Um, next year, what usually what I recommend, which don't feel bad, my, my sophomores not really need them paid yet this year too. Um, but I recommend that you pay $25 if that's easier on your parents, pay $25 each semester, okay? Um, when you have several people, family members, seventh grade up, I know it adds up. I mean, I know that, but it's just, it's either that or we do fundraisers. And 
we've gone away from doing this, a lot of the fundraisers, okay? So any questions on that? The amount of money was set by administration. It goes towards prom and caps and gowns, okay? Any questions about what we're doing the next two weeks? I pretty much have laid it out, right? You will have two hours to take your semester test, so you will be in here for two hours. You'll be in every class for two hours. So on odd days, uh, first hour, you'll have two hours of whatever that class is, okay? And then third hour, which would be me, you'd have me for me this time until lunch, just like we did at the end of the semester right before Christmas, if y'all remember that. Okay. All right. Weather and climate. Hi, it's Paul Anderson, and this is Disciplinary Core Idea ESS 2D. It's on weather and climate. Weather is what we see outside, like these thunderstorms right here. All right. Weather is your first word. Weather is what we see outside. It's what's going on at that moment outside. Yeah. The climate. Okay. Weather is what we see outside. It is what is going on at that moment. So what is the weather like today? What is the weather today? Raise your hand. Bo, yours was up first, I think. Uh, damp and cloudy. Damp and cloudy. Malachi, how would you explain? Um, describe the weather today. What's the word that we use when we talk about weather instead of moist? We call it what? Starts with the H. Do you remember? Hum yeah. Humidity. Yeah. Is the humidity high or low today? Low. It's high. If there's a lot of moisture in the air, Malachi, then you have a high humidity. Um, I can tell if there's a high humidity because of my natural curly hair. Anyone else that has natural curly hair knows what I'm talking about. The more humidity in the air, the tighter your curls get, right? The drier it is, the looser your curls get, okay? Um, humidity, humidity can affect a lot of things. So what was the weather yesterday? Cold. Raise your hands. If you have an answer, raise your hand. Raise your hand. Raise your hand. So what was the weather yesterday? Hot and sunny. Hot and sunny. Uh, is there very much wind today? No. Was there wind yesterday? Yes. Would you call it high wind or would you call it low to moderate? Low to moderate. Yeah, it was kind of low to moderate yesterday, right? Now, earlier in the week, we had high wind, right? Okay. So that is what the weather is. The weather is what you see or when you walk out the door, or when you look out the window. It's what's going on outside today. That's weather, okay? It is different, and so students tend to confuse those. Weather is what it looks like right now, so it's what it looks like today, and climate is what it looks like over a long period of time. All right, climate is what the, what the temperatures and the amount of rainfall is um, over a long period of time. And when they're talking a long period of time, they're talking at least 10 years. So when they talk about the climate in your region, it is based on what the weather has been like at, for at least the last 10 years. Usually it's more years than that, but they're talking about at least 10 years when they say what, our, what your climate is. So climate is, uh, is, is, is uh, how your weather is over a long period of time. Weather is today. And so they're both measuring the same thing. Things like temperature, things like precipitation, wind, but it's really time scale. Weather is what it looks like right now. Climate is going to be over time. So what causes weather? What causes climate? Well, a number of different factors. Be the amount of time. All right, so what causes weather and what causes climate? So it can be the sunlight, the amount of sunlight, or the lack of sunlight. That's the one thing that causes weather. Okay? It could be the oceans. What's going on in the oceans? The oceans have a lot to do with our weather. Uh, the currents have a lot to do with our weather. Okay? 
Yeah, they got ocean and sunlight down. Sunlight, oceans, atmosphere, ice, land. Atmosphere, ice, land forms. Forms, light forms, all these things interacting together are going to give us our weather today or our climate over time. So when you look at our planet, what you see are oceans and landforms, and those oceans and landforms are going to receive energy, receiving energy in the form of sunlight. And what they do with that energy is going to determine the weather. They're going to... And what do we call that when the water receives sunlight? Bo, what is that cycle called? Oh, the water cycle? Yes, the water cycle, which we learned about a few weeks ago, right? And we learned about how the wind blows the clouds to a different region and all that, right? So that is, the water cycle has a lot to do with our weather and our climate, okay? And that's what he's telling you here. Take in that energy, they're going to release some of it, they're going to absorb some of it, they're going to redistribute that on our planet, and that's going to create the weather that we have. And so some major uh, redistributions on our planet would be the currents. And so current is going to be flow within the water of... All right, so the currents has a lot to do with the redistribution of our weather. The currents of the ocean has to do with the redistribution of our, of our weather. And what a current is, the current is the, is the flow within the water, within the ocean waters. Sometimes we have low, low currents. Sometimes we have high currents. Sometimes we have a whole lot of currents. Sometimes we don't have very many currents at all. Uh, what affects the currents? Does anybody know what affects the currents? The moon. The moon will affect the currents, okay? The moon affects the currents. You need this. You need to know that the current affects the redistribution of um, weather, and the moon um, has to do with the current. It controls the current to a certain extent. All right. Has everybody got that down? Yeah. Any questions? to be flow within the water of the ocean itself. It's caused by temperature and changes in salinity. What salinity and changes in salinity? What do you think that is? The amount yes. of salt. In yes, the amount of salt. The amount of active salt within the ocean. And it does change due to different things. But So, the currents are caught... Um, the currents are caused by temperature and the amount of salt along with the moon. But if we're looking on the atmosphere itself, what's going to move our weather around are going to be the winds. And that's going to be caused... Okay, what winds, the winds move the weather. Okay? The winds move it. And we talked a little bit about that during the water cycle, right? reason I told y'all remember kiddingly I told you that's why we don't get very much rain here because it has so much wind it just blows it on by us but that's how we can get that the, the moisture from the oceans can eventually end up out here if the high if the winds and stuff are right so the winds move the weather by unequal heating of the earth and also the spinning of and what causes the wind is the um, unequal heating of the earth. So that would be an example of what? What would be unequal? What do you think of when you think of unequal heating of the earth? Anybody? Right. And why is that? Huh? Boy, the earth's tilted. What is it that goes around the earth? What goes around the center of the earth? The equator. The equator. Okay. So that's gonna have that will have a lot to do with how how hot it is or how cold it is, how close you are to the equator or how far away you are from the equator. Okay. So that's the reason really it's really, really hot at the equator, right? But on the North Pole and the South Pole, what is it? Oh, no. So that would be unequal heating, right? Or unequal temperatures? 
drastic wind. So that causes, that makes a difference in the weather. It makes a difference how those cold fronts and warm fronts come through. Did any of y'all in here ever watch the weather? And you heard the term, there's a cold front coming in, or there's a warm front. Uh, what what causes um, thunderstorms and stuff? The fronts coming together, right? The cold and the warm fronts coming together. All right. So. It's um, what's going to move? What depend the winds oh, have to do with the unequal heating of and the also earth the spinning and the spinning of the earth. So how much wind we have um, has to do with that unequal heating of the earth and the earth spinning. Okay, that's where our winds come. That's what um, controls the winds. Of the earth is going to create winds that tend to travel in the same direction. So in Montana, we tend to get our weather from the west, and that's because of the spin of the earth. Another big thing that affects our climate is going to be the green. All right, so a big thing that affects our climate, in theory, is the greenhouse effect. And we all know what that is, yes? Greenhouse effect? The way that works, um, and it gets its name from a greenhouse, and so if you've ever been in a greenhouse, especially on a hot day, it's really hot there. Even if it's cold outside, it's warm on the inside. How does it do that? Well, it's receiving sunlight, so it's receiving energy from the sun, but what the greenhouse is doing is as that energy is converted into thermal energy or heat, it's going to keep it close to our planet, and so we're not losing that as light, but that heat is actually reflected back down to the earth and it traps this heat near our planet. Now eventually we're going to lose that heat, but it's going to stay there for a longer period of time. So we have what are called greenhouse gases and those greenhouse gases in our atmosphere are going to slow that loss of heat. The big four are going to be methane, that's natural gas, carbon dioxide, water vapor, so that's water that's in a um, gaseous form, and then nitrogen oxide. And so all of these are going to act to hold that heat near our planet. And so changes in climate or changes in our weather over a long period of time are really going to be due to two things. Changes in that atmosphere and their... All right, so changes in the climate, which remember, climate is over a long period of time. The two main things that change a climate has to do with um, the greenhouse effect, in theory... And the Earth's reflectivity. And the Earth's reflectivity. So in other, mean, other words, that means so the sun comes down and we reflect it back off. And depending on what's going on in our atmosphere, how long it takes it to get back to outer space. Okay? Reflectivity. So climate has... Uh, a lot to do, uh, the two main things that, that, that determine the climate is the greenhouse effect in theory and the Earth's reflectivity. So everybody got that down? For changes in our greenhouse effect and then the Earth's reflectivity. In other words, how much of that energy from the sun is just reflected back into space and how much of it is going to be held here? And so if we have something really, really white, something really, really light, like a glacier, it's going to reflect a lot of that light. But if we have something really, really dark, like a parking lot, for example, it's going to, have, it's going to hold more of that heat. How many have ever heard that uh, black cars are hotter than white cars? And that's why the black absorbs the heat. The white reflects it off. So the lighter, and it, it don't just have to do with white. It does with all paint. So the lighter your paint is on your car, it won't get as hot inside your car. The darker the paint is on your car, the hotter it's going to get inside it. Because of the dark re absorbs heat and light reflects it. So that's kind of an example of the difference between reflecting and absorbing. And why the glaciers reflect it off and the parking lot sucks it, holds it in. When we went to the Grand Canyon, we went over to the dam, the Hoover Dam, which isn't very far from the Grand Canyon, but anyway, and it was in the middle of summer and it was really hot. And this was when you could still go down 
and do the tour through the Grand Canyon. They have opened it back up where you can go down part of the way, but you, you couldn't go, but you can't go all the way down. Back in that time, you could go all the way down because it was before 9-11. And, uh, but standing there in line for our term, term to go into it, it was so hot because we were standing on asphalt and concrete. So it was like the sun was hitting you from here and then you had heat coming up off of that concrete and asphalt because it was absorbing that heat that was coming down. And it was cooler, even if you couldn't find a shade tree, if you could just find grass to stand on, it was, there was a big difference in the temperature. You know, you could go stand on the grass and go, oh. <laughs> you know, this feels so much better. Kind of like when you're outside and it's really, really hot and you get underneath the shade tree, you're like, oh, this is so much better, right? Yeah. And so what we can get is climatic changes, and those climatic changes can occur over a very short time scale over a long time scale. So what's an example of a... So climatic changes can change either over a short amount of time or a long amount of time, Okay. And an example of a short climatic change would be a volcano erupting. Short time scale, a big volcanic eruption can throw so much sediment into the atmosphere that it is going to reflect more of that light, not as much of a... All right, so what is the sediment that he's talking about that a volcano throws into our atmosphere? Matthew? Guys, remember to raise your hand. Ash, okay? It does produce lava, but the lava doesn't go up into the atmosphere and just hang out and float up there, okay? It goes down, right? It comes out and then it goes back down. Uh, rocks will sometimes fly out, but they don't stay there. They come back down. So that's not gonna affect the sunlight, okay? But the ash does. So like the day that the pasture over here across the highway caught on fire and there was tons and tons of smoke. I mean, it was cleared out by the evening, but at first there was a lot of smoke, a lot of smoke. So on a uh, volcano, it creates that smoke and it creates, creates ash. And um, if there's not a lot of wind to blow it on out and clear it on out, it can be up there for months at a time. Depends on how active the volcano is. Um, some volcanoes will erupt and in one day and they're over. So they create ash but not as much and it's so it's faster for it to clear out. Other volcanoes can erupt for days. Some volcanoes erupt for years, okay, and have erupted for years. So the more that it erupts, and when it's erupting, it's not always shooting out lava, okay? But it always shoots out ash and it always shoots out smoke. And that stays up in the atmosphere, and the atmosphere doesn't have time to clear it out. And so it reflects the sunlight. So everything down there is gonna be a whole lot colder. The plants aren't gonna get the sunlight that they need. So that could create a short-term climate change in that region. That makes sense. Okay. The light is going to get to our planet, so we can get a cooling of our planet by having so much of that sediment in the atmosphere. A meteor impact could do the same thing, but we can also have. Which is the theory of what happened to the dinosaurs, right? They died. But why did they uh, die? Because they survived. Didn't eat it. No, because the it came back here or something. It was there a big meteor hit yeah. Earth. Yeah. yeah. So we'll talk about it. Yeah. We have to talk about dinosaurs and fossils and stuff Smart. next year. So we'll talk yeah. we'll talk about it next year. It's a theory. Flow yeah. changes. It's about small disturbances in the amount of radiation coming to our planet, and those over time can cause small fluctuations in our temperature. And ice ages are caused by that. As we had the arrival of life a lot of those cyanobacteria started doing photosynthesis. It produced more oxygen, put that into the atmosphere and actually changed the makeup of our atmosphere. And so a lot of these occur based on feedback loops. Feedback loops are going to be loops that- All right, so climatic change over a long period of time is affected by what they call feedback loops.
that either, either keep it stable or push it more away from stability. So a quick example of that is as we heat our planet, we're actually melting a lot of the permafrost. And as we do that, that releases methane into the atmosphere, which is a greenhouse gas, which is gonna cause it to melt faster, releasing more methane into the atmosphere. And so humans can have an impact on this as well. And so we're creating more carbon dioxide in the atmosphere. We're doing that through the burning of fossil fuels. And this is just gonna be looking at carbon dioxide levels in over the last 40 years. And what that's gonna do is increase our temperature. Or as we melt more of that Arctic ice cap, what's gonna to happen to the reflectivity of our Earth is gonna change, and that's gonna cause an increase in temperature as well. So how do you talk about all these in school? Well, you wanna start by delineating between weather and climate. Okay, so everybody feel comfortable with the difference between weather and climate? Yes. yes. So now we're gonna talk about air masses and weather fronts. Any questions over climate and weather before I start this? You know, every morning on the morning news, I watch the weather. And really, when the weatherman comes on, he has all of his fancy screens and he's talking really fast and he just stands. Um, he's predicting the weather. He's telling you what he thinks based on some yeah. data he has, what the weather is going to be for the day. Well, you know, my grandmother also predicts. So how many give a grandma and grandpa that predicts the weather due to her arthritis? So if her arthritis is hurting really bad, she's it's gonna rain. It's gonna rain. Or there's a cold front in the winter time there's a cold front coming in, right? And even though that is pretty reliable, um sometimes more reliable than the weatherman. Because it does, and it, it has to do with the amount of pressure, air pressure, is what makes her arthritis or his arthritis hurt more than other times. Uh, another thing you can use to predict the weather with is animals. Adam, animals will act different when there's storms coming. Like horses, they will run and run and run and run and run. And it's almost like they run in circles if there's a storm coming in. And you know, they might start it the day before the storm actually gets here because they they can feel the pressures different than we feel them. Cows tend to bunch together instead of being all spread out and they're all bunched together. Huh? Yeah, they usually go to a corner of a fence and bunch, they bunch together. Uh, especially if it's a cold front that's coming in. And so they get together so they can um, help each other with their body heat. They can stay warmer with them all crunched together in their body heat. So you can predict the weather with your with animals also, yes. Another one is usually when a storm's coming in, birds will actually quiet down. Yeah, birds will get really quiet. It's called the calm before the storm. Have y'all ever heard that saying? Mm -hmm. The calm before the storm. Um, a lot of times before a tornado will hit, um, it will get really, really quiet and the wind will get to where it's not blowing at all and they call that the quiet before the storm. And the reason that is is because that tornado that's coming in is sucking all that air into it and it has it contained within it. So they call that, and then you hear something that sounds like a freight train. If you ever hear something that sounds like a freight train, that means the tornado is awful close to you. You better get in cover if you aren't already. Like immediately, okay? where that one in this one comes in from. Other All right. So in this video, we're going to be doing three things. We're going to define and categorize what air masses are. What exactly is this thing called an air mass? 
we're going to describe the four major types of fronts and what is a front. Uh, and then lastly, we're going to predict the type of weather based upon what type of front we're going to see. So we're going to use our knowledge of air pressure, temperature, humidity, the big three, and we're going to use it to predict the type of weather that we're going to see based on our front. Okay, the big three things that determine your weather or predicting your weather has to do with humidity. Use our knowledge of air pressure, temperature, humidity, the big three, and we're going to use All right, did y'all see that? I'll back it up just a bit. All right, so the big three that predicts our weather or that we use, that the weathermen use to predict the weather has to do with air pressure, temperatures and the humidity in the air okay that's the now there's other things they use too but that's the three big things they use to predict the weather and remember weather is a prediction they are predicting with, it's, it's what they call an educated prediction a lot of people think the weather especially young kids will say just to that weatherman lied. They said we can get a whole bunch of snow last night and we can get hurt in. Well, it's not that he lied. It was, that was what his prediction was based on the knowledge that he had. Okay, so always know that a weather forecast is just a prediction based on the knowledge that the weatherman has. And those are the three other things they use to predict. They three. To help them and predict the weather. Use it to predict the type of weather so let's quickly go back and review what we've learned about weather so far. We quickly saw that air temperature is one of our big three when it comes to weather. So that is air temperature, air pressure. All right, so you got air temperature, air pressure. Pressure and relative or I mean, the amount of water in the air. And air temperature is largely driven by where you are on the earth. All right, your air temperature has to do with where you are, right? Equator, the sunlight hits you much more directly, and so that you get warmer air. And up at the poles, the sunlight hits at an angle, and you get colder air. So you need to know that the closer you are to the equator, the equator is this little line, it goes around the map, it goes, it goes around the center of the earth, okay? That's the equator. The closer you are to it, the hotter the temperature you are. The further you get away from it, the temperatures get colder and colder. So the North Pole and the South Pole are the two coldest places on Earth over a long period of time, climate-wise. And the equator is the hottest. And then you've heard of the, um, you ever heard of the, uh, oh my gosh. I just talked about it last hour. What is that called? The thing that sucks the ships and stuff down. Well, the Bermuda Triangle. Triangle. Have y'all heard of the Bermuda Triangle? Yes. That has to do with weather, is is their theory. I mean, it has, huh? What did you say? It's what? Fake? You didn't see that. It really isn't fake. Okay? <laughs> well, because it does kind of like a, uh, their theory is, it does like a reverse tornado. So instead of it being the clouds and the tornado comes down out of the clouds, it goes down. It creates a funnel and it pulls you down underneath. And but it, huh? Well, the thing is, you, they can't predict when it's going to happen. They can't predict when the. Um, they haven't yet got where they can predict when. Um, it's going to create that undertow or that suction that pulls them down. They know it has something to do with the currents and it has to do with the weather and how it's how it comes in there with the heat and everything. But that there has been ships and airplanes and stuff that they do truly believe that were brought down by by that. Yes. Kind of. Yeah, you know, it's kind of like, it's like I said, it just, instead of it's, okay, so when a tornado's spinning, it picks up all that stuff, you know, it gathers it all up, and then takes it somewhere and drops it else, right? And you've seen the tornadoes, you've seen the tornadoes on TV, and they're spinning around, and you see a house, or you see, you know, and that really does happen. That really does happen. 
So this would be the opposite. It would do the, the tornado, like the big part of the tornado is going to be at the top, and then it just narrows down into like a funnel, you know, like a funnel would, and or like a drain, and it just as it goes down, it pulls everything down with it. Yes. Can they, can they just fucking scuba diving down there? No. They don't come back. Where do you go with the We got a scuba. Okay, so my question is this. Do you want to learn how to scuba dive and be the one that scuba dives down and see where everything's going? Yeah. 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 creates a circle in things moving, right? Okay, so your temperature creates the convection. And that's like So the temperature creating the convection is what creates our winds. Okay, so you need to have that in there. You can put temperature equals convection equals winds. You don't have to write the whole thing out. You need to know that the temperature creates a confection, and the confection creates the winds. So the more confection going on means the stronger winds we're going to have, right? We must have a whole lot of confection. Does everybody got that? Did you have a confection for Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Storm. Or a nice storm. Okay. Oh, yeah. All right, so it's this. So the 